Welcome to the Chapter 3 Spreadsheet Software Lecture. This begins on page 106 in your text. And we're going to talk about the chapter objectives. First, you're going to understand what a spreadsheet is. Describe how rows and columns make up the structure of a spreadsheet. Explain what text, values, and formulas are. Describe the types of graphs commonly found in spreadsheet programs. Explain how copying formulas can simplify the use of a spreadsheet. And list and describe the ways in which paralegals can use spreadsheets. So first we need to talk about what is spreadsheet software. So it's basically a program that's going to calculate and manipulate your numbers using labels, values, and formulas, all of which we will review today, especially if it's been a minute since you've had Excel or aren't very familiar with it. So we will use Excel 2019 or 365, whichever version of it that you have is fine. Um, but we in the legal organization, we use it to create different budgets. We can use it to calculate child support, different alimony payments, um, truth and lending statements, loan calculations, real estate. So really in just about any area of law that you go into, you can use the Excel spreadsheet software to help you manipulate those numbers. So what this chapter will describe is it will discuss with you what a spreadsheet is and its structure and the fundamentals of it how to plan, how to create a spreadsheet, and how they are used within the legal environment. So what is a spreadsheet? And basically it's a computerized version of an accountant's worksheet. So if any of you are old enough to remember or you used to have a previous employment using spreadsheets in the ledger form, it's just life before computers and how we used to track everything. So it's the same thing as that fill in the sheet that we used to have. We've just moved it to the electronic version. So we need to understand that it is uh, a spreadsheet software is used to create a spreadsheet. And within that spreadsheet, we have worksheets. And the entire thing is called a workbook. Okay, so we can have multiple worksheets within our workbook. Maybe we have um, yeah, a spreadsheet for our monthly budget, and each tab at the bottom or worksheet could be for each month. Okay. So I'll actually open Excel and show you some of the things when we get further into the discussion. But again, it is one of the first applications used to run on personal computers. Secondly, it's easier to use than manual worksheets. It can be updated and edited and hopefully uh, less uh, human errors. Okay, I'm at the bottom of 107. And we're talking now about how the law firm can uh, reap from the benefits of spreadsheets. And basically, anytime we're talking about money, we're talking about numbers. So if it is for the complaints and the damages, do we need to calculate that up? We could spell that out in an Excel spreadsheet uh, showing that monetary relief. We can calculate damages. Okay, so we don't want to make errors uh, with us transposing numbers or leaving something out when we can have the electronic spreadsheet take care of it for us. Again, Spreadsheets are used extensively in bankruptcy law, tax law, state law, real estate, and many others, as we talked about previously. And then we ourselves, the law firms, use it to track income and expenses, create budgets, produce any type of accounting records that we need, or maybe some statistics with advertising or something like that. So there are many benefits to this. And when we think about the uh, ease and flexibility that we can uh, use with spreadsheet software. Some of the features it allows, it allows entries to be edited, moved, or copied. So we could move some of our um, uh, values around. We could also uh, add or insert columns and in rows. That's a very simple task. 
multiply, divide, add, and subtract different entries so we can create formulas. It will perform complex calculations. So that, you know, college algebra, it will do a lot of that for us. Automatically recalculate total and other calculations when information has changed. So if you're changing a part of information or a specific row or column, any type of uh, formula will update accordingly. It also allows numerical information to be presented in several different types of charts and graphs, pie charts, line graphs, etc., bar charts, we can add those in as well. And it allows information to be saved and retrieved for future use. So we can save it, print it, print certain sheets, maybe not the whole entire thing, etc. So it then goes in to talk about the what if analysis. And for this, uh, a good example here is what if something was changed in our spreadsheet? What if our monthly budget has decreased or we need to plan for that decrease? We can type in what if features. And the book gives your example as what if a small law firm wanted to evaluate what would happen if rent doubled for the two month period shown? So it's gone from 4,500 to 9,000, okay? It would recalculate that total automatically, okay? So the what if, what if a client's child support is going to increase 5%, what do those new numbers look like? Okay, so the what if analysis to look in the future to reflect on scenarios and possible uh, budget reform as well. Spreadsheet structure and organization on page 108 in your textbook. And this is where I'm going to minimize the presentation in open Excel. So you can still go along if you'd like on your end with the uh, presentation. But here we have first our rows and columns. So I always say I feel like a bingo caller or I'm playing Battleship. If you remember those um, games, you'll see that we have columns have letters across the top and rows have numbers down the left. Okay. If I say go to cell B2, you would click on column B down to row two. Another way to navigate through your columns and rows is by using the arrow keys on your uh, keyboard. You can also press enter to go down a sheet or tab to move across the sheet, always to navigate. You can also come up here to the name box in the upper left hand corner and type in Z22 for example. Press enter and it will take you to column Z22. I can also type in A1 and it will take me back to the beginning of my spreadsheet. A1, B2, uh, N45, those are all cell addresses. So where a column and a row intersect is called a cell. The cell address would be, for example, A1. Cell pointer, obviously, it's just your cursor. Uh, when you have a cell selected, you'll see that green box around whatever cell you're clicking on. But your cell pointer is that white crosshair. Okay. And your cell pointer here. Current cell indicator, again, is the green mark. You can type directly in the cell, or you could come up here and type directly in the address bar. Either one is fine. It gives you the same result. Sometimes I call that address bar. It's also called a formula bar. Many years ago, it was an address bar, so I'm sorry if I confused you with that. So again, you can type directly in the cell, or you can type in the address bar. Okay. The status bar we have down at the bottom. Okay, that's down here. We have our status bar. Right now we're editing because we're in the cell. If I click off, you'll see that it's now back to normal. You can use your plus and minuses to zoom in and zoom out on the screen. Those are just for you, the editor. They do not uh, print. 
Menus, toolbars, and ribbons, those are across the top, just lay like they are in Microsoft Word. So this is the ribbon. We have the tabs across the top of the ribbon that are all pretty standard and similar to Word with the exception of the formulas. Horizontal and vertical scroll bars, obviously across the right, up and down, and across the bottom. And lastly, as a reminder, worksheets. You'll see we have sheet one at the bottom. We can add multiple sheets. Maybe we're doing a budget. We want to have each sheet as a month, January, February, March. Okay. So within this workbook, you'll see book one until you save it, are worksheets. All right, I'm going to head back to the presentation now. Oh, I never pressed. Oh, I did, thank goodness. Thought it stopped. All right. I'm going to go ahead and finish this last slide seven here. Which is the WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. It's the acronym for this. And it just allows you to add your colors, add your formatting, um, it just allows you to pick from the different fonts and the different type styles. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this now, and I will pick up on slide eight in part two.